Warning. The following program may contain foul fucking language, gory ass shit, or the occasional slow point because I can be a lazy fuck with editing. Viewer discretion is potentially advised, but also probably rejected. Welcome to the land of OP, I am Rob the OP Gamer, and I am bringing you another episode of my Ultra Hardcore series. This is going to be episode 2, and I'm going to be continuing right where I left off at the last episode. Did a little bit of stuff off camera as you can see, and I'll get to that in just a second. But before I do, I just want to remind everybody to go ahead and like, favorite, follow, subscribe. Check me out on uh, all my channels, my YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and Twitter. All of them are slash Rob the OP Gamer for the link for every single one of them. Make sure to tell all your friends and family, especially your grandma. I know she watches me. I don't know why I make that grandma joke so much. I need a new I need a new stick. It's in all my videos. Also, really quick, I wanted to apologize to everybody for all my loud keyboard sounds. I just recently got a new mic and a new desk, and the desk is actually just a plastic picnic table. So yeah, basically just from Walmart, just like a six foot picnic table. It's actually working out really well. It's only four. I picked up because it's only forty bucks, but hey, it's. It works really well, it's got a lot of space on it, but my keyboard makes a lot of noise echoing on it, so I need to figure out what to do with that. Maybe next time I get the opportunity, I'll pick up a new keyboard, uh, like a light profile keyboard. I want a light profile gaming keyboard, we'll see what happens eventually. So I'm standing in front of my partially completed smeltery. Uh, what I did between this episode and last is I went down, as, as you guys saw on the end of the last episode, I just dug straight down, basically made this giant staircase down. I lied to everybody, by the way. It wasn't four high, it was three. That's how I like to do it, because it's just high enough to walk down. So you go two over, and you go down, you go two over, and you go down. It's, it's you dig down three, dig down three, go over, dig down three, dig down three, go over. And so you do that. And it's every third one I put a torch. So it's torch, and then it's one, two, three, and torch. And then when I get down there, I just basically extend the hallway. And I'll show you really quick down here, because I got a Y level 40 place I was digging as well to try to get copper. And... Um, quartz as well. So basically once I get down to the bottom I do the same thing down there uh, as this. And that led to a cavern and that didn't quite lead to a cavern and I was just doing some digging around and there's another place down there basically the bottom is the same. So and I did a lot more digging at Y level. Uh, I think I was down at Y level 10 I think ish. I did a lot more digging down there than I did at the uh, 40 because uh, I, got, I got a good bit of copper and everything going. Copper seems to spawn. Copper used to only spawn at like higher Y levels and now it seems to spawn everywhere. I'm not sure if that was an intentional change or not. But then I decided to start working on a smeltery, dug out a little alcove in my wall, rearranged my barrels a little bit, made a grinder. The grinder isn't really that big a deal. It's a hand crank. You can see right here it's just three cobble or it's just two cobblestone, three stone, a wood gear, and three uh, quartz or neither quartz dust. And the gear of course is just four sticks. So that's not really hard to make, and then you can just put ore in here, and you twist the hand crank. I'll just show that really quick here. Let's grab a, I don't know, let's grab a stick of iron in there, and then you can just twist the hand crank. And don't, careful not to twist this too hard or too fast. <laughs> or you might break it off. <laughs> but uh, you twist the hand crank and eventually get two dust. So it's a, it's a nice early game way of manually getting a couple of iron. Or of, of manually doubling your output. So I got a good bit of ores going on here. Made myself an iron pick. I've actually gone through two of these guys. Um, and an infinite number of stone picks. And I made a couple of portable tanks and uh, a bucket and got myself some lava as well. Um, this is just a piece of copper with four of any kind of glass around it. So those guys aren't hard to make at all. And um, I made myself a piston door. This isn't hard to make either. A piston, of course, is just your one iron and one redstone. And cobblestone and wood. So, uh... If I need to show anybody how to do that, then they're in trouble. And what I did down here was I realized later on... I heard an Enderman. I hope he's not... Is he trolling me? I don't see him. I've been hearing him for a while. Anyway, so basically this piston door is not hard to do. I just made an XNOR gate. This is part of Red Project Red. And the XNOR gate, basically what it does is anytime its states are the same it outputs a signal, and anytime they're different, it doesn't. So this button temporarily changes the uh, condition down there. I'll just click that button again really quick. See how one torch went off, and then they switched around? 
So basically, any time that the uh, signals differ, it will open, is the idea. So it'll differ when I push this button for a few seconds and then close again, and the same thing over here. And you just got to make sure that uh, one button is on one side. Let me just show this off again really quick. So I got orange on that side, and I got purple, or magenta I should say, on this side. So that gives a different state, and then it outputs to light blue, which I've got set to the uh, piston there and the piston there. And white I'm not using, it's just a dead cell. And, oh, I ended up with an extra, oh, I had an extra dirt. And so basically I have a piston door. And the reason why I said I don't want zombies breaking down my door, I had that trap door, the skeletons can see you through it, and when I force connect cable connection mode on all these, then it just kind of takes up the space. It's pretty fucking ghetto, but hey, <clears throat> it's a nice door. I was going to use pressure plates, but I haven't made obsidian yet, and I don't want to use obsidian plates. <clears throat> or I would want to use obsidian plates because monsters can't trigger them. I didn't put down regular plates because I didn't want monsters just walking in. So let's get going on the smeltery. I want to do smeltery and basic power today. Uh, these guys are pretty pretty simple to make. These are made out of four of these seared bricks, which is smelted out of a grout, which is one sand and one clay, and one gravel will get you two of those. Not exactly fucking high tech. Or you can make the eight version, which is mathematically the same. And so I made a few bricks. I made a stack of bricks and a few extra bricks. And, uh... This is 32 bricks. I do a 9x9 nine nine pattern, and then I, I like to go 4 high to start, usually, with my smelteries. And, uh, that's how we're going to do that. This is a torch next to a cover. Cobblestone cover from Forge Microblocks. Uh, outside is daytime. Wow, that's a bad one to put. Let's try this one here. There we go. Outside is daytime. You can see it's just a thin little cover. I've got seven more of these guys. And these are made out of a handsaw. I just took one of my diamonds, basically, and I made a handsaw. Uh, where? There it is. So you do two sticks and three rods and a diamond. And the rods, I've got one extra here, two stone or two cobblestone. Two stone gets you four, two cobblestone gets you two. So you can use extra cobblestone or you can cook them to get a double your output if you really want to waste the fuel on that. I didn't, I just used cobblestone. Whatever, who cares. <clears throat> and then I sawed them, I sawed these up. You can see that it's, uh, you take a cobblestone and then you can just saw them up. I'll just use this here really quick. Like so. And you get two slabs, and then you saw the slabs up above like this. You put the slabs here instead. Saw the two slabs, and that'll get you, um... I forget what the slabs get you. The slab gets you the second step, and then the, those, the second step gets you the covers instead. So that's how I did that. And torches now, I don't know when this happened or who did it, but torches uh, count as micro blocks now, so you can put them in the same blocks as the micro parts. So that's how, to did, how I did that. And I only did that because I don't want things to spawn in this smeltery when I'm not doing stuff with it, because I'm fucking paranoid. So that's how I keep monsters from spawning. So we are going to make um, some glass, I think. So I need uh, three, six, six, I need twelve glass. So let's go with, uh, there we go. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There we go. Whoop. Bam. And the only reason I do that is because I like to have glass as part of this here. I just do this because I like to... Oh, that's the bad time. That was terrible. Ah, oh, noob fail. So I just like to have a little bit of glass. You don't have to have glass. You could just use the bricks. In terms of seared bricks, it's the exact same. I mean, it's not like you're using any extra seared materials of any kind. Uh, so it doesn't really matter too much. I just like to because I like to. So, yeah, there we go. And then uh, we're going to use just a couple more bricks. One, two, and then I'm going to do one, two, three. And then I'm going to put my tank over there. So let's make a tank. The tank is going to be one glass in the center, and then you make a circle of these guys. That's going to get you your tank, and then a circle is going to get you your smeltery controller, like that. And you place the smeltery controller so the back of him is facing inwards, just like that. See that? And then you're going to put your, your tank right there, or I'm going to put my tank right there, I should say. And I'm going to take those lava tanks that I made, down, donk, 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 and I am going to put these guys over here. Whoop. And these guys are from Thermal Expansion. There we go. And then, uh, that's the Crescent Hammer, of course, just one tin in the center and three iron. It's not exactly high-tech. And it's able to be used on most things that require a hammer or a wrench. So, that's, that's kind of a good thing out there. And then I'm going to use my bucket. And we're going to grab our bucket. Later on, I'm going to use an ender tank and have this auto-fill itself. But we need to 
put some lava in there. There we go. Why are you not auto-filling downwards? Interesting. Oh, it says he is. Uh, Wayla says 8,000 of 8,000, but his graphically is messed up. Oh, well, no big deal. So uh, that's good for now. I'll stick this bucket back in here. And then we're going to make a couple of smeltery... Seared, is it these got? No, that's the controller. No, that's the casting basin. How do you make the drains? I think it's like this. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to need six of those guys. So I'm going to do four, five, six. And then we'll just do that. Bow. And that's going to go like so. Shift click to get that on top of there. Bow, bow, bow. And then we need some spouts. So I'm just going to do... We need six spouts. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to go right on those guys. Whoop. I guess it would help if I faced the fucking thing. And now that I have actually done all this work, I just realized I don't have enough space to walk through here. So I'm just going to go ahead and dig this out. I don't really care. If this was my actual base, I might give a fuck. But this is not my actual base, so I don't really give a fuck. This is just a temporary hole in the wall to live in for the time being, so no fucks are given. If I really gave a fuck, I would move this whole thing back into this wall more. Like, I would recess this a little better. That way it would give me a little more access over here, and uh, that would help out with that. But I'm not really caring that much. As long as I can access this, that's all I really care about. So we're going to go here, here, and here. That's going to be our spouts. I might actually even just go ahead and break some of this out, just so I can see a little better over here. Oh, this looks ugly as hell now, doesn't it, guys? Oh, well, we're not going to live in this hole very long. I'm only doing this for temporary sake, so... Not that worried about it. And now we need some casting tables and basins. And there's my compendium. I don't know why he jumped down there like that. Um, one, two, three. Oh, I guess I didn't need to do that. That was dumb. One, two, three. There we go. And I'm going to put the um, put the basins. Oh, that's going to cover up that glass, isn't it? Oh, well, there we go. Again, it's a temporary thing. Maybe off camera. I think off camera I'll go through here and shift this whole fucking thing back into the wall a little better. That might be a good plan. He needs to go, I think, this way deep. If I push him back... Actually, if I just corner him back... One, I think I'll be good. Be in good shape. I'll dig this out one more. Yeah, I'll do that off camera. Hang on a second, guys. I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. Alright, guys, I'm back. Uh, through the magic of movie editing, I have recessed this guy into the wall here, and I've begun working on the parts builders for this. I also had a little bit of an issue outside. I had a uh, spider that was on the roof, and I tried to fight him really quick, because that was having a constant spider sound in your ear while recording is a bad time. So that worked out pretty terribly. Uh, took a little bit of damage, took a heart and a half, and you can see that I'm not regenerating my heart <clears throat> because this is part of the ultra hardcore thing. It's a configuration option through Tinker's Construct so that when you're full on hunger, you don't regenerate health. So I have hardcore going on, but I also have ultra hardcore going on, which is fantastic. This is part of the pain of the series. So I have to find an alternative way to uh, regenerate my health, so potions or spells or whatever else not. That's why I got the Arcane Compendium early last episode, so I can start working on that. And we'll get to that either this episode or next. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I'm working on Tinker's Construct right now, just getting a few things ready to go. You can see I've built a few pieces here. I actually built this on camera, and then the clip glitched out, and I can't actually recover it, so that kind of pisses me off. I hate when the fucking software does that. But I started making these guys. I placed down a stencil table, a pattern chest, a part builder, and a tier two, tier 2 tool forge. You guys probably saw my inventory when I was building this thing uh, a few moments ago that I had 36 iron. I prepared that off camera between the last episode and this one so I could make the tier 2 uh, tool fork. So let's just look these up really quick. Uh, stencil table, just want to show this off because I showed it when I was building it, is a uh, any kind of plank <clears throat> and a uh, blank pattern. The blank patterns are pretty easy, it's just two planks and two sticks. So that's how you're going to make those guys. The part builder. is going to be just a log of any kind, just a regular wood log and a, and a pattern. And the pattern chest 
is going to be a chest in a blank pattern. And the chest, of course, is eight of any kind of plank. Get you one of those guys. And then the tool forge itself was the fun part. The tool forge is going to be a tool station, which is upgraded. You take a crafting table of any kind and a blank pattern gets you a tool station. And then the tool forge, you take four blocks of iron and three seared bricks and upgrade that guy. So that's how I did that. And I placed them like so. And you can see that you can click through here to find your pattern. Next pattern, next pattern, next pattern. You can see the patterns you get. And I made a bunch of patterns. This is basically just for a pickaxe and a sword and some of the uh, uh, tier 2 tools because I like my hammer and I like my excavator and, li and I like my lumber axe. The hammer made me happy when Tinker's Construct came out because since 1.2.5 I have been digging in 3x3 three three holes when I do my mining off, you know, for just trying to get resources. So the fact they came out with a tool that did that exactly, that made me so happy. Lumber axe chops down an entire tree with one blow, which makes me happy as well. No more wasting tons of time you know, chopping wood. And the excavator is the same as the hammer, but for dirt and gravel and sand and stuff. And I've been working on these parts here. We're making them out of flint initially. So what you do is you take this guy, and I had to grind up some more flint off camera, which is why I was off camera. You can do that in the grindstone here, which I made as well. I think I showed that a minute ago. So I'm going to stick my gravel. Whoop, that's my cobblestone. Gravel. We'll put that away. Well, that sounds like an angry zombie. Yeah, that's, that's a bad time. Um, let me sleep really quick. Oh, they're too close. How about over here? There we go. That's a graphic glitch. Don't worry about that. Now, hopefully, they'll burn to death. Ah, the sweet sounds of zombie burning in the morning. So I had to go make some more flint so that I could uh, continue this. Because these all have material cost. A tool rod pattern is half the material cost, which is what you get out of a shard here. You can see if I tried to make a tool rod, it's going to give me a tool rod and a shard. Because it's only half. It only takes half the flint. I'm not going to do that because I already made one here, as you can see. These all have material costs. So 0.5. Here's one for a pickaxe head. One full flint. One full uh, sword blade. Uh, half for the wide guard. Uh, three for the tough tool rod, which I already got. And I got the tough tool binding and the large plate. So now I need to do the broad axe head pattern, which is eight as well. And then the excavator head, which is eight. And then the hammer head, which is also eight. There we go. And those just take these straight out of the tool chest, which is cool. And the reason I made these out of flint is because we're going to need to make casts of these. So we're going to place one guy here, and then one guy here on the casting table, and then one guy here. And we need to make casts of these. And that's how we're going to make the cast, is how we're going to be able to make our pieces out of metal. If you don't care about making them out of metal, you just want to make them out of stone or wood or whatever, you can do that in the part builder here and assemble them directly. You don't have to worry about all that. But we are going to because we want metal pieces. Yay, metal pieces. So I've got lava in here for my lava tanks. And now we need to smelt this up. If we get out our book really quick, I'll just show you guys here. Um, smelting, I believe, is where it's going to have it in here. Recipes, there we go. So if we click through here a bit, you can see we need alumina brass, which is three aluminum and one copper. Okay, so I'm going to drop this in here, back in here. Let's get out some aluminum and some copper. So three aluminum and one copper. Uh, that's an ingot form, so we're going to double this. So this is two copper, it doubles your output, and three. So this is going to be uh, two and six, basically. And I think each one of these, each one of these casts, I think, takes one full ingot worth, I believe. So let me melt this up really quick here. And I think this is going to give me uh, one, two, three. I know that this is basically six aluminum ore and two copper ore. Uh, six, uh, so, but I don't think I'm going to get eight. I don't think I'm going to get eight ingots worth of it. I think I'm going to get like five, six maybe? I think that's how it's going to work. <coughs> Ow. Let's see how this works out here. All right, so we got, if we hover the mouse over here, we can see right here, Molten Aluminum 6. And as soon as that copper finishes, it's going to combine with it to give us our Aluma Brass. Come on. Bam, Aluma Brass 8. So it did go to 8, cool. So let's do this. Right click, right click, right click on the spouts. It'll pour the Aluma Brass around it, and it will make the cast. Now how much do we have? Uh, five. So it is one ingot per. Nice. I wasn't sure. I haven't done this a whole lot. Usually when we get on a server, 
my server, my friend and server admin Xavier McMage, uh, does the smeltery stuff, and I tend to just take advantage of it, of his hard work, and then that's it. So, <laughs> and then I don't pay attention. So I'm gonna grab this blank cast out of here. I'm gonna make another quick chest, just over here, and we're gonna circle that guy, and we're gonna make another part chest, because I usually have two parts chests, and I'm gonna just jam this right here, bonk, and I like to put my parts in here. So I've got my casts, and I know this, this is for the uh, patterns. So I like to do two of those guys for that reason. So I'm gonna drop this up here, and I'm going to, I think you can store these in here? No. Uh, where do I put these? Maybe I'll make another chest then. Hmm. Interesting, you know what? Nuts to that, I'm gonna use a regular chest. Now that I did that and wasted that wood, I'm just gonna put a regular chest down there, cause whatever. So let me just, uh, yeah, he can go in there. Not a big deal. So let's make another chest. I need to go get wood, which is probably handy because we're making a lumber axe in a minute here. I'll show that off on camera in a second. So I'll just put a regular chest in here, I think, and we'll just drop these. I'll probably have to upgrade that at the later point, but that's all right. And then we're going to do the sword blade and the wide guard and the tool rod next. So it's going to go bam, 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 and that's going to be three more of these guys. So we're going to go doink, doink, doink. Yep. So we got two left in there. So let's pop these out of here. So I'm going to go ahead and throw these up off camera as I'm going to have to melt up uh, sword blade, wide guard, tool rod. I got the tough tool rod. Yep. Okay, cool. So I'm going to have to melt up enough to finish these off. I've got two in here, so I need to make up three more. So I'll probably just put just straight ingots in there. Uh, you can use the blank cast later on, though, so maybe I'll just make a blank cast. You can remelt them if you just do a full plate of it there. So give me one second to finish that up, guys, and I'm going to upgrade that chest. I'll be back. All right, guys, so I finished up with the tool casts here, and I'm going to show you guys now how to actually utilize this. So we got our smeltery empty. Everything's looking good. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an iron pickaxe out of this guy, and I'm not going to grind this shit up because I hate grinding this shit up. So we can double this ore output with the smeltery naturally. So putting one ingot in there, as you saw, we got two copper out of one, and we got two aluminum out of one. So that's pretty much how we're going to do this. So what we're going to do here is to make a pickaxe, I am going to just make a straight iron pickaxe. So that's going to be the uh, one cost for the rod, I believe. Let's take this out here. So uh, tool rod, this is a half a cost. Uh, tool binding is half a cost, and a pickaxe is one cost. So we need two ore, which is one, or we need two ingots worth, which is one ore. So if I jam this guy in here, he's gonna melt up. And then what I'm gonna do is take this, and we're gonna go tink, tink, and tink. Just right click those to put them on there. And as soon as this iron melts up, we're going to have a pickaxe. I'm also gonna come over here and I'm going to get a diamond out of here. Why am I going to get a diamond? Well, I'll show you in a second. And also, I need to make a little bit, I need to get a little bit of water. So I'm going to grab a bucket. I'm actually going to grab, where's my bucket? There's my bucket. I'm also going to grab a few pieces of glass. Uh, hmm, thought I had more glass than that. Let's get one more piece of sand here. I'm just going to cook up one. I'm going to use two sticks. Two sticks is cooks exactly one thing in a furnace. And I'm going to sleep really quick, because I don't want to run into zombies when I go get water. So let me do that. There we go. Cool beans. And now that that's done, I, where's, there's my glass. And we're going to grab a piece of copper. And I'm going to make another portable tank really quick here, because it's not that hard to make. And we're going to go out here, and we're going to find water, which is just over here. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to put my tank down and I'm going to get two buckets worth of water, just like that. Because I don't have two, I don't have two buckets, but I don't have the iron for it right this second, so that's just how we're going to get two. Portable tanks are always useful, so I don't mind making a few. And then I think, um, let's see, we need an infinite water source somewhere. I'll just put it next to the trash can. No, you know, uh, yeah. Let's see, do I want it to be here? Uh, I'm going to dink around with this good second, guys, see how I want to put this. Right, guys, I found out something really awesome. This uh, redstone torch, just like regular torches that I showed in the smeltery, are micro parts. Nice, I put a cover right there. That kicks all the ass forever. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a button really quick. And I'm going to put this button right there like that. Cover him orange. I put that cover in front because I had those seven extra covers from doing that one up there from the saw. So I'm going to do that and we're going to cover this up and that looks awesome. What we have here is a really high tech of made out of low tech materials auto water piece. This whole purpose of this thing is so that I can press this button to turn off that torch to turn off the uh, piston for a second. So what I can do is I can come over here like this. I can grab a lava and I can stick this here and I can hit this button and BAM! Obsidian. So I don't have to pick this fucking dirt up every fucking time. Then I can just mine out the obsidian. Nice! Why am I, why am I doing that? Well, you'll find out in a second. Uh, portable tank. I should probably put that away for the time being. Not a big deal. And... Oh, the redneck cable is awesome. I love redneck cable. BAM! And that's world gin right there. So raw plastic, smelted out of rubber bars, smelted out of raw rubber, which comes out of mine factory reloaded rubber trees, which you can see I got a few pieces of because I chopped some down. I need to plant some of those actually because I'm running low on that now. Let me just run outside and do that really quick. I'll just drop a few. Oh, ooh, that almost squished me. That was bad. Uh, let's just drop a few of these down at random. I'll make a nicer tree farm a little later on. I just want to be able to chop these down here a little bit later. Just whatever. Once those actually all grow, I'll come out with my lumber axe and chop those down. And we'll get this. Oh god, please don't kill me. Oh god, it doesn't help if I get stuck on the cable. I need to fix that door. I need a much better door. That scares the shit out of me all the time. Okay, so uh, we made our two molten iron bits that we melted down. And we're going to go dink, dink, dink. And that's going to make our pickaxe pieces. So there's our iron tool rod, there's our iron tool binding, and our iron pickaxe head. And then I can just stick these guys away for the time being. Nice. And then we're going to come to our part builder. We're going to click on uh, pickaxe, and we're going to drop in... There we go, there we go, and there we go. And that's going to give us an iron pickaxe. Reinforced one. Nice. This guy will never break, so I don't have to worry about carrying these around ever again. So those are going to go bye-bye. Bye-bye! And the cool thing is, one iron pickaxe normally is three iron and two sticks. I just made that with basically two, one iron ore worth, so two ingots. So this is two ingots, this is three. It even saves you a little bit on the cost. And because this never is going to get destroyed, I don't have to worry about carrying around extra picks. So that is awesome. Now what I'm going to do is I have this diamond. If you just sit in the regular repair and modification mode, shift click this guy in, and you can see how it's being modified. It's not. If I add this diamond... Look, it gets some diamond bits on the sides. Modifier is diamond. What the diamond modifier does is it increases durability plus 500 and now gives me mining level of diamond. So I can do this. Yes! Give me all of this right now. Give it to me. Nice. It's slow as dirt. Oh my god, it's slow as dirt. But you know what? That gives me one obsidian. Nice. And then I can go over... I'm actually just going to go ahead and grab one of these tanks. What's this? Three buckets? Let's just grab two of these. Who cares? And I'm going to bring these over here for use right here. And I'm just going to make a few... I'm going to make a good bit of obsidian here with my high low tech thing. Nice. Okay, so now that I've got the obsidian working, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do most of this off camera because it involves a lot of smelting. Obsidian takes forever to melt down. Uh, I think it's the black book, actually. Let me grab the black book really quick here. Yep, recipes right there. We're going to make alumite. Now that I can get some uh, obsidian going on. Uh, alumite is uh, 5 aluminum, 2 iron, and 2 obsidian. So it's 2, 2, and 5 in order to get alumite. And that's what I'm going to make my tools out of. I'm going to make a pick out of it, a sword out of it, my lumber axe out of it, my um, hammer out of it, and my excavator out of it. I'm going to make it all out of alumite. And it's going to take a lot of melting down. And the process is just the same. I'm going to make a melt them down. Uh, pour them into the patterns and then assemble them over here and you might say well why bother making this pick if you have to uh, make the other pick well it's because I need to get at least the ability to get obsidian because that's part of the recipe I can't you know I can't make it until I can mine it right how else am I going to get obsidian I could have been cheap about it and made like a terrain smasher and gotten obsidian that way but whatever I'm also going to want this for later on purposes down the road a couple of episodes down the road uh, I'm going to need to make this into silk touch because I'm not gonna, I don't like my natural pick being silk touch. I like to have it looting instead. So this is good to keep around just for that purpose. And so we're going to do that. Um, so I'm going to start melting up some shit off camera. I have a lot of obsidian to mine. As you can see, it takes forever to mine this shit, this fucking obsidian. So I'm going to get working on that, and we'll be back again in a few minutes. 
All right, guys, so I just wanted to show you this really quick. Uh, if you make too many of something, you can remelt them down so you don't have to worry about losing the parts. And the reason I'm doing this is because I basically converted everything I had in, like, most of my lava I turned into obsidian over here. And I have gotten most of everything I needed set up over here for my uh, aluminite tools. Alumite tools, excuse me. But I ran out of aluminum. I have two aluminum. And that's not enough to keep making more alumite. So I need to go locate more lava and I need to locate more aluminum, which means I need to go mining. So I was starting to make, like I made three rods and two uh, tool bindings. I counted out how many I need for each of these awesome tools, but I just didn't have enough because um, the plates themselves are eight material cost a piece and the broad, X, the broad hammerhead is eight material cost, you can see right there. Um, and so I just didn't have enough alumite, so I was remelting those down. And I'm gonna make my uh, alumite head really quick here. There we go. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my hammer, move that out one, I'm gonna make my hammer so I can go mining and get some more material between this episode and next. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make the hammer really quick here. There's the hammer. And we'll put the hammer head and the tool rod and the plates and bam, hammer. So that's cool and then I've got one rod extra right there. I'll just stick that in there for the time being. And I have two ingots worth of molten alumite left and I don't really have anything I can do with those at the moment so I'm gonna make a pickaxe head of it and a sword blade head of it because they're both material cost one right and then I can empty this out and then here's what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to take these three blank casts now that my uh, smeltery is empty I'm gonna remelt these blank casts I made and grab these and I'm going to drop those back in the chest and these I'm going to melt back down in a second. But what I'm going to do is with the blank cast, you take any kind of ingot. doesn't matter. Copper ingot, iron ingot, tin ingot, whatever the kind of ingot, it doesn't really matter. And once you get your blank cast, it's one bucket worth of the Aluma Brass a piece. Well, just like we were making casts a minute ago with the flint pieces. Um, now I've got three a piece, and I'm going to make some ingot casts. See that? Now I can make ingots out of this because you remember how we can double our ores with this anyway. So the really cool thing about this is if you want to, if you just need iron for something and you're like, oh shit, I don't have any iron, then it doesn't matter. You can just make ingots out of it. You can double. Instead of having to hand crank that thing forever, you can just melt that down that way. So I'm going to remelt those down really quick because I don't actually have, let me sort that really quick because I'm paranoid as hell. Uh, I don't actually, or not paranoid, excuse me, neurotic as fuck. Uh, so these are one ingot a piece. So I'm just going to remelt these guys down really quick and then pour them in the ingot casts. That way I have ingots of these. And I can remelt the ingots later if I want to or I can use them to repair. Whatever I want to do with them is perfectly fine. Uh, maybe I won't even do it. Maybe I'll just go find some more aluminum and just melt more of it really quick to continue making my lumber axe. I'm going to make my lumber axe and my excavator off camera because you've seen how to do it now. And the last thing I'm going to do is I need one, two, three four, five, let me grab all this. I took apart a dungeon I found at one point. And let me see if I have enough to make five balls. Yeah, I do. So just you make nine of these guys and you get a Tinker's Construct and Ball of Moss. So one, two, three, four, five. There we go. And the reason I made five of those is because I'm gonna have five tools here in a minute and I'm gonna put the rest back up here for now. And we're gonna upgrade these with the moss. And what that does is it gives it the moss upgrade, which is auto repair, which is awesome. So now we have really awesome tools that will repair themselves over time. And I got two more balls of moss for my hammer and excavator. Or excuse me, my lumber axe and my excavator when I get them. So we upgraded them that way. And I'm probably also going to throw some redstone on some of this. So I'm just going to make really quick a block of redstone. Or four, six, there we go, that's fine. And just to show you guys... Um, you can stick your hammer in here and you can do two upgrades at once. So that's going to give me 18 redstone because I've got 9 and 9 from one block. So we're going to do that and we're going to do that and then one block because it doesn't have 9 modifier left here. And then once you get up to your 5, 2 and then 5, now it can't be upgraded anymore. Oh yeah, it can. We can go up one more time. Uh, redstone gives it speed so it's got haste on it now. Uh, so I don't quite have enough redstone to get that last that last haste on there, but that's alright. We can just keep it the way it is. But that way it can mine a little faster for us. 
so we don't have to take quite so long to dig. And I'm going to work on Lapis. Once I find enough Lapis, Lapis is going to give us our um, Fortune ability, which I'm going to put on the pickaxe. So that'll be cool, and that way I can I don't have to worry about, like, if I find diamonds, I don't have to worry about using the hammer. Well, the hammer couldn't go... The, oh, the hammer can go through it if you want it to, but that's all right. So I'm going to grab these off of here for now, just throw these back in there. I'm going to get rid of these shitty-ass tools I don't need anymore, and we're going to go from there. So I'm going to do some mining between now and next episode. Next episode, um, I will have my... Uh, last two tools completed, and I'll have done some mining, and we are going to get working on um, a little bit of magic stuff. We're going to do some Ars Magica, and if we have time, we're going to get into Thawncraft, because I need to start scanning shit. So until then, this has been Rob the OP Gamer. Hope everybody had an OP time. Like, favorite, follow, subscribe. Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, etc., so forth. Hit me up. Catch you next time. Peace!